Welcome to this video and thank you for being here. And I really hope that if you asked yourself the question of how to transition a bare root orchid into semi-hydro or self-watering using inorganic media, I hope that this video helps you, answers your question. And if it doesn't, please elaborate on any further questions you may have in the comments. And I'll be very happy to address those on a case by case basis. Seeing that the orchid hobby itself comes with a lot of cases, a lot of examples, a lot of variables and different situations, environments and all of that good stuff. This is a general guideline. This is what I do when I want to get an orchid that is mounted or was bare root, maybe just in a basket without any media at all into a pot so that I can keep up with the needs of the orchid. And here we have a classic example of a Cattleya gyra cosmos, which finds itself on a very interesting inorganic mound, which I consider extremely bare root <laughs> because there is absolutely no media around it at all. And you can see that my process of adapting it to a wetter environment has worked for new root growth, but it has deteriorated the old roots. And this is something that can happen, will happen, doesn't necessarily have to happen. Again, the variables come into play. But what is actually going on here is there is constant water in a container and sometimes they touch the roots and you can see roots greening up and sometimes the container is completely dry. But more and more often the container and the roots stay wet. The reason being, this orchid obviously is going to be transitioned, and that's why we're here today to talk about it, into a pot with Lekka in a self-watering setup, which is an environment that roots on a mount are not accustomed to. So any new roots need to be sort of broken in that the belayman will take on the characteristics of a very wet and humid environment so that when it comes time to pot the orchid up, your new roots are already established in that pot. Now you can say, well, I could have taken my orchid off this mount before the new roots came and put it into a pot and let the new roots grow into the pot. And that is obviously an option. And it would have been a very good decision to have made before the new roots grew, because now I'm going to be taking it super slow to protect whatever has grown, get that orchid off the mound, and then put it into my pot. So my workload is a little bit more precarious when I get around to putting this orchid in a pot. The other thing is though, if I don't know an orchid and it is new to my collection, as is the case with this orchid, I have no way of knowing when the orchid starts to grow roots until I see the root nubbins develop. So putting an orchid into the setup that it should live in prematurely could set an orchid back even further, as you saw with the dead roots that were viable before, and I had them in the water so that the orchid would revive after having gone through some shipping stress, and those roots would have died in my pot, and I would be none the wiser. So there's a lot of little things that we need to think about when we want to put an orchid into a pot that has grown bare root, is used to a wet-dry cycle, or is on a mount. It isn't just a question of taking it off the mount and potting it up. We have to start an adaptation process and what I call the pre-transition phase begins when the new roots grow. Taking an orchid off a mount prematurely as well before the new roots grow, even if it is not acclimating to your conditions, you've had the orchid many, many years, keep in mind that that is very destructive to any root system. So you want to be able to see new roots grow prior to you removing that orchid off the mount and giving it now access to more and more water for the new roots to get accustomed to. Any kind of root damage, anything we do prematurely, if the backup plan, the new root system hasn't started growing yet, no matter how long the orchid has been in your collection, can pose a massive, massive problem. So here you might ask yourself then say, well, I don't have any plans of removing my mounted orchids off of my mount, so I appreciate you watching this video anyway. Thank you. But what if your orchid grows so well, which is what we want, on the mount, and you are not able to keep up with its needs as it grows into some kind of a specimen orchid? It will require more water, or more humidity, or both. 
more ventilation if more humidity is required, more fertilizer, more flushing. All these things will start to compound themselves as your orchid grows. All these factors will increase. That increases a workload. And the question is, will you be able to do your orchid justice on the mount as it grows in size and becomes a specimen size? Sometimes our life changes as well. We have to move our orchids. We don't have that greenhouse that we used to have anymore. Our humidity levels drop because it's not used to that environment and you might want to either change the mount or put it into a pot so that you can keep up and let it continue to develop and grow and become even bigger. As was the case with my Sophronites cernua or Catlia cernua as she is now. She was on a mount. She grew very, very well in her first year. And then I put her on a bigger mount she was doing really well. I have a very dry climate. I don't have any humidity, so to speak, to help me with my orchids. So I put a lot of sphagnum moss around the roots just to be able to keep up that the water doesn't evaporate so fast, leaving me with salt and mineral deposits on the surface of the sphagnum moss because the orchid hasn't had time to absorb the fertilizer and yet it's already dried out. And then because of the fact that my sphagnum moss was continuously wet, that would degrade so fast, I would have to change the sphagnum moss every six months, which is a disturbance for the orchid, always fiddling around the roots. One of those periods of change changing sphagnum moss was not during active root growth. So it's always a little bit precarious to be messing with an orchid on a mount if the conditions aren't viable or feasible to be refreshing the media while there is no active root growth. Fast forward another year and I came to the decision that my Catlia cernua needs to go into a pot and then I transitioned her from the mount while she had roots growing straight into the pot and it could be that I've lost the old root system in the pot in the meantime, but that would be two root systems ago because she's been in this pot now going on into her second year. She did very, very well in the transition. She didn't stop blooming. She looks a little bit funny at the moment because she needs to now get out of the way she grew on a mount, the shape wise, where the new growths are coming. And so the blooming was a little bit here, there and everywhere when she did bloom, but this season, she's already starting new roots. They are growing into the media and any new growth that she may produce for me this season will grow according to the light source, which is coming mainly from the top. So you see what was previously a mounted orchid here has been transitioned to go into a pot, very high water retentive media. There's Akadama in there, top dressing of some lava rock. It's a semi-hydro setup and I can easily flush through. The needs of the orchid are met because I have very high humidity around the leaf and the structure of the orchid. Plus, I can be liberal with my watering and fertilizer. I have no fear of any salts and minerals accumulating on the surface because the orchid has time to absorb them. You may still have very high humidity, but let me just take you back to when I said, what if your conditions change? and you realize you cannot keep up with the workload of an orchid that is growing super well on a mount, and your conclusion is it has to go into a pot. Whether you take an orchid from a mount and pot it up into semi-hydro with inorganic LECA, or you're gonna pot it up into organic media, it makes absolutely no difference. Fact is, the new roots need to adapt prior to going into the pot, to being in a more wet water retentive media, and that will include bark because that is wetter and more water retentive than the nothing that the orchid was growing her roots on previously. Bark isn't very water retentive. Sphagnum moss is, but again, it's not going to last very long if your orchid is growing in size. So if in your case, your orchid does not need to get acclimated, as was the case here with mine, then, Take it off the mount the moment you see root nubbins coming. Keep those roots nice and wet for as long as possible before you mount them. Or when you pot them up with the root nubbins showing, make sure that you give it adequate flushes so that the media stays nice and wet so that the roots do not desiccate the moment they hit the media. And if you cannot get to it fast enough, but you don't want the new root system to attach to the mount that you have, 
get the orchid off the mount. Your new roots are there as backup. Yes, there will be damage to old roots, but in no time your new roots will be doing a lot, a lot of good work because they will start to grow super fast and you are ready to pot the orchid up once they reach a certain length, but at least they haven't attached themselves to the mount. So if this is what you're considering on doing, I hope that this video was helpful and I will be, of course, <laughs> filming my removal of this orchid from her mount. Personally, I don't anticipate many, many issues when I do that, seeing as there is no media around the roots, but with the holes and trying to fandangle the new roots out of this structure without breaking them yeah i think we're going to be a little bit quiet when that happens and do a lot of concentrating <laughs> ideally this orchid should have already been in a pot maybe three weeks ago but she's only been in my collection not even a month so we've had to acclimate her and now we're faced with putting her into a pot but one thing is for sure the new roots have been transitioned. They are ready to go into a water retentive media and they won't fail. And that is all what this is about. No matter what we do, we don't want to lose a root system. So let me know in the comments if this video has been of help and answers the question that made you click on it in the first place. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very, very much for watching. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day. As always, though, on one condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.